Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about the top five things which Logic still needs to do in order to really fulfill its full potential. Now these are my opinions. Uh, I'm interested to hear what you have to think about it. So join in the conversation in the comments. But we're going to just dive right into these things which I think are missing from one of the greatest workstations ever made. So you know where I stand. I still like Logic, but I'm going to show you some of these things in the actual software itself and talk you through why I think that they're missing and how, if they would be included in future versions, they might actually really help with the entire music creation process. So there's five things I want to look at, and these are five things that are in my mind. I made a video like this a number of years ago where I talked about four or five of the things that were limiting me in using Logic. And actually, most of those things have been changed, updated, expanded. And so I had to actually kind of go through a completely different list to see where we currently are and to see which things I would find the most useful personally. And that's not to say that these are going to be the same five things for everybody. And that's why if you want to add some stuff, do it in the comments. Uh, but I want to look at five of the things which I think would really be useful for Logic. Number one, and these aren't in order like as most important to least important or something. These are just the, the thought process, like the way I was thinking about it. Number one, I, I'm ready for Logic to give me the ability to customize my interface. Not just give me different colors because, you know, we're stuck with this one palette of colors, uh, which doesn't actually include white or black or gray. I mean, there's a couple browns. But just give me a universal color thing where I can move all the colors I want. It's not just this. It's actually that I want to be able to come through and change or have different skins for this that match uh, either a different workflow, different mood, different type of music, etc. Right now, it's one size fits all for almost everything. We can change the background colors a little bit. We can change region colors. They've given us uh, some different icons here. But, I mean, there's just so much we could do with this if, we, if they really wanted to get creative with the interface. And while the interface doesn't change how things sounds, uh, and it wouldn't really matter that much in terms of the end product, I do find that I'm working in Logic quite a bit, and it would be fun to be able to swap it around and, and change how things look and uh, just have more power over the customization of the interface. So that's one thing. It's uh, been pretty stagnant over the years. There's been minor tweaks, but... It feels very much like it did uh, almost 20 years ago when I first started doing this. And that's one of the reasons why I'm making this list at all. I have now been using Logic for 19 years and uh, going on 20 years in 2021. So I've been using it for a long time. And there are some things that have been familiar the entire way. So... It's, it's kind of would be nice to be able to have some of that stuff flexible. So I could do the original or I could change things around, have different layout, different pan options, different mixing look, all of that stuff just all changed up. Okay, number two. I think it would be great to be able to have 360 degree features inside Logic. This would match with some of the 360 things that Final Cut is now doing. And I hope that they don't just put 360 audio inside Final Cut and not in Logic. You can do 360 audio. I use the Waves 360 bundle with the NX Head Tracker to get full ambisonics immersion in Logic. But we're really limited in what we can do and how we can do it. And so I think it'd be so useful to be able to increase the features there. Now, Ambisonics is not a new technology, 
but the uses of it are becoming more and more widespread. Things like gaming really kind of kicked off immersive audio. YouTube, the app, both in the web browser and on mobile, can handle first order ambisonics. Facebook can do immersive audio. If those platforms can do that, why can't Logic do more with it just built in and give us more features? I think more people would do really cool immersive music mixing if we had those features readily at hand. Okay, another thing then would be to finish all the updates for the instruments and the different processors. Stereo spread. Okay, that's the old new. I mean, looks horrible. I still use that effect though. And there's a number of these that are like that. So it's time to start finishing what you started and just get these done. Uh, there's definitely, well, I think Silver may have been updated now. Yeah, so this is kind of the new normal. But even that's kind of just pretty boring. But we have a lot of instruments that um, Ultra Beat and Sculpture and a lot of the other synths that have really busy, even if they're high resolution uh, screens, so you can expand them and make them full screen, they look better. Even with that, the interfaces themselves are really cluttered and busy and represent a different time period in terms of the whole music production interface. Now, They've really kind of nailed this down. Let me add just another instrument here. So for instance, with the new sampler and the quick sampler, those are examples, even with Alchemy and the drum machine designer, all of those represent kind of the new thing of Logic. And they match a lot closer to some of the other instruments we have, or the effects rather, like the step effects, even though it's brown, this is kind of like the new look. And it'd be great if everything just matched it and was easy to use and easily movable and you could do all kinds of things with the interface, right? But we don't have any of that ability right now. So we're stuck with kind of a mixture of instruments and doesn't feel cohesive throughout the whole library. Okay, the next thing would be some of the new artificial intelligence or machine learning processing. Uh, so there's some, some ones out there where you can like put it on your master and it analyzes everything coming in and builds a, like a radio ready mix or something ready for Spotify or iTunes or uh, it compensates for your headphones and gives you a great sounding mix no matter what. Things like that where it's using intelligent design to get us further in our mix than we can maybe do by ourselves. Now, a great engineer might not need this, but in terms of time and effort, I would rather spend that amount of time creating the music tracks getting the creativity part down and, and letting the computer get us further along technically if it's possible to do so. I mean, we don't want robots taking over our music, but if they can help further us along and take something that's great conceptually and make it even better sounding, then I don't see a problem with that. And I wish Logic and Apple, who does this in so many other places, would lend some of that processing into the audio side. What would that look like exactly? Hard to say, but we already have some things which are moving in that direction, uh, at least a little bit. For instance, the Match EQ, which learns the spectrum of something and then puts that on something else. This is very stagnant though. You get kind of a snapshot. We could do this with um, real-time back and forth. So it looks at what's happening in that moment and what your expectation is, and it's going to change the curve so that everything sounds uh, in a new way even better or even more appropriate for a destination, etc. So 
some of that type of programming is very doable in today's world. It's just going to take some time and effort and some really smart geniuses to do it. The last thing, and perhaps this would be number one on my list if I had to number it, would be something I'm calling universal file import. Now, you can bring in individual files of all types into logic, but I say we screw any kind of copyright issues that could happen from this or um, proprietary software, and we just say, you know what, we're going to create a system that lets you import any type of file project from any other DAW. Now that we have the, the live loops, we can do anything Pro Tools can do. All we need to do then is say, here's their file structure. Let's create a one-to-one -one map for everything possible in there. Open up a Pro Tools file inside Logic and everything just pops right where it needs to be. And you can continue mixing in Logic. And then you can export it out as any file standard out there. I understand why companies might not want this, but at the same time, I don't see people leaving platforms because you could do this. And so what would be nice is to be able to just, you know, someone send you a file if they're working on Ableton, and we just open it up directly inside Logic, and after we work on it, then we can directly export it back, and they can continue working on it inside Ableton, or Pro Tools, or FL, or Studio One, or Cubase Nuendo. I mean, this is not outside the realm of possible. I think it's very possible. Uh, you could even, you know, take the different pieces of data for their effects and do an approximation. So we have EQs that are very similar, and you can just do the same Q settings and the same gain settings and the same slope settings, same reverb time and densities. All of those things are fixed. And so you could do uh, a representation of those in other effects and get pretty close. So that would be the last thing I, I think that we should rise above all of these squabbles about who uses what and just say, you know what? Use what you want creatively and you can exchange all of this stuff back and forth through everything. Just like MIDI was standardized for everything. MIDI's the same in Pro Tools and Logic and Cubase. If we had a standardized file format between everybody, or at least the ability to translate it in a really useful way, that's when I think the door opens to real creative exchange and collaboration. Okay, those are five things that I've been thinking about. I know there's probably a thousand other things that everybody else is, is wanting from this software, but it's just as good as it's ever been in here. I can work in different ways. I can do the live loops, which I'm not doing very much. But I can use all the instruments. I can sample things. I can, I mean, all these things have been around, but it's as good as it's ever been in terms of quality and efficiency and fun. And so making music should now be what we focus on next. And some of these tools, as they continue to come out, Hopefully, we'll just add to the fun and the efficiency and let us keep on doing what we want to do. What are your thoughts? Leave some comments below. What, what else do you think Logic is still missing? What do you wish it could do? Okay, that's it for this video. Let's move on. I'm going to do some more. We've got a big video coming up all about the sampler, looking at how to actually program some things in the sampler with groups round robin, all of the zones, and the, the auto looping that's inside there. Such a cool instrument, and we're going to be looking at that. Hopefully, I'm going to get that out by the end of the week, but maybe early next week. We'll see. If you have any other requests, make sure you leave them in the comments, and I will see you all later.